Hi, I'm Taylor Bento, the owner and creator of Bags by Bento, and today I'm in my studio so that I can show you how to crochet a jute doormat. So grab your supplies and let's dive in. Just a few notes before we get started. Today I'm using a Q17 or a 15.75 millimeter crochet hook. The brand is Boy. I purchased this one at Joanne, but these are readily available at most craft stores. And um, you can substitute for a 16 or a 15 millimeter if that's what you have on hand. It shouldn't change the results too much. And today I'm using a raw natural jute. This one is from Hobby Lobby. I bought in a large roll for $14.99 and was able to make two doormats with it. So it's super affordable and eco-friendly. Now, if you're not a jute person, if it's too rough on your hands or you don't like the look, you can also use a vintage cord. I have a friend who sells her vintage polyester cord on Etsy, Macrame Mama, and I will link her shop in the description below. She has great colors, and because it's made of polyester, it holds up super well in wetter and underfoot. So before we dive in, just so you know, you can purchase the written PDF pattern. I will link that in the description below as well. That might be helpful to have to follow along with the video tutorial. So be sure to check that out. Let's go. We'll begin with a magic circle. As an alternative, you can chain four and slip stitch the ends together. It might leave a slightly larger hole in the center, um, but you can do that instead of the magic circle if the magic circle is not your thing. All right, I've got my magic circle here. Now I'm gonna chain two and this will count as my first stitch. And then I'm gonna do five double crochets into the center of my magic circle. And it helps not to make your stitches too tight on this pattern. See, I'm doing those double crochets over my tail here. So there should be six total, including the chain two. That's my sixth double crochet, including the chain two. And now I'm gonna pull my tail here to tighten up my magic circle. I'm not gonna pull too tight because I do need a hole here for later to place a single crochet. So don't pull it so tight that you can't place your hook back in here. Okay, and that is your round one. And from here on out, we will be doing a chain two at the end of each row and then turning our work. So you're not gonna be working in the round. We're gonna be chaining and turning each time. For row two, we're gonna count the chain two as our first stitch. And we're gonna do a double crochet in the same space as that chain two. And then I'm gonna to continue to do two double crochets in each stitch across until I get to the end of the row for a total of 12 stitches. I'll meet you there. Your last two double crochets are going to be in the chain two space that you started with. If you're having trouble getting it into the top of that chain, it is okay to just double crochet around it. With this chunky jute, it can be a challenge to fit your hook into those chain spaces. And it will look just as good if you do it around the chain. So I've got my 12 double crochets here. And now I'm ready to chain two and turn. And now I'm ready for row three. Now for row three, we've got our chain two as our first stitch. 
and then we're going to begin to double crochet into the next stitch. So I'll do two double crochet here. And then in the next space, I'll do one double crochet and so forth. I'll alternate between one, two, one, two, one, two, until I get to my chain two space at the end. I'll meet you there. I've alternated between one double crochet and two double crochet in each stitch until I've gotten to my last double crochet here. I've done two and then one. This is my 16th double crochet. And I'm gonna do one double crochet in the chain two space here at the end. So I've got a total of 17 stitches, including the chain two at the beginning, just like that. And now I'm ready to chain two and turn. And now we can go to row four. For row four, we have our chain two that counts as the first stitch. In the next stitch, I'll do one double crochet and in the next stitch, I'll do two double crochets. And I'll continue that pattern of one double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochets, until I get to my chain two space here at the end. So by now you're probably noticing a pattern where we're increasing the amount of double crochets we have in between the increases. The increases are the ones that we put two stitches in one space. So if you can think about row four, multiples of four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That helps me to be able to keep track. I'll go ahead and do those to the end of the row and meet you back. I've done one double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet until I only have one stitch in my chain two space from the previous row left. So for these last two, I'm gonna do one double crochet into each. And I'll have a total of 22, including the chain two at the beginning. Now I can chain two, turn my work, and begin row five. For row five and each row after this, we'll be adding additional double crochets in between those increases. And like I said before, the increases are where you put two stitches in the same space. So for row five, for example, there are one, two, three double crochet times one in between the increase. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Until I get to the last two stitches and I'll do one double crochet and then one double crochet in that chain two space from the previous row. And this one will have a total of 27 stitches. If you don't wanna do the math or um, count the increases, you can download the PDF pattern below in the description and I've done all the hard work for you. We're gonna do a total of 10 rows and then I'll show you how to do the top border. So go ahead and do your additional six rows and I'll meet you there. I just finished row 10 and now I'm ready to start the border along the top of my mat. So I'll chain one, turn, and I'll be working single crochets all along the top here. I've estimated approximately 30 single crochets but the most important thing is, is that it doesn't pull or tug and that your mat lays nice and flat. So do as many single crochets as you need in order for that to happen. I place my single crochets into the top stitches so that there aren't big gaps. So it'll look something like this. So into that chain space here. And if any of these stitches are new to you, I'm going to put links to tutorials for single crochet and double crochet. 
And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get to the other end of my mat. Should look something like this. Quick tip here, once you get to the center of your mat and you have this tail from the beginning of your work, it's really helpful to single crochet over that end and weave it in as you go. So you, you don't have to deal with this later. Looks something like this when you do it. You're just single crocheting over that tail so that it's nice and secure and weaved in. An optional step is to spray down your doormat with something like Mod Podge. This is a sealer. It will help it stand up over time since it will be stepped on a lot and possibly out in the weather. This works really well. I would spray it down, let it set, and then you're good to go. Thanks for making a doormat with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this tutorial so you can get future tutorials. And you can check out bagsbybento.com for more free tutorials, crochet tips, and beautiful bags. Thanks again, guys, and have a great week.